I don't I don't know why I'm so nervous to film today. I've been filming all week for a vlog that you'll see eventually, but I'm just really nervous. <laughs> Roll the intro. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Winnie Reads where I talk about books and things. And today I'm very nervous and I don't know why, like why am I nervous, but I guess I don't know, getting back into filming and getting back into booktube has been like, it hasn't been a negative experience, but I forgot that, you know, I forgot how to set up lights and how to edit and like, I didn't like how my videos were edited last week and it's just been a lot. So bear with me, <laughs> you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to do my best to bring out really good content for you and that it's enjoyable and so on and so forth. So yeah. So today's video is the no disclaimers book tag. Now, if you've been to my channel before, if you haven't, hi, hello, I'm Monica and I talk about books, but if you have, you know that I tend not to do disclaimers, at least not that much. Like, I tend to just say what's on my mind and whether people take it a certain way or something, I try not to dwell on that too much, but you know, sometimes you, you we feel like we have to make disclaimers. But I'm gonna try not to make any disclaimers in this book tag and just get on with it. So let's get on with the prompt. Prompt number one, which book trope annoys you the most? I think there are two book tropes that really annoy me the most, or I don't know if one of them is a trope or if it's just a book device, I don't know. But number one is the chosen one trope. Hate the chosen one trope. I think it's been so overdone. I think it's really um, limiting as far as writing goes. And of course it can be done well or whatever, but I just really hate the chosen one trope. It, I, we can get over it now, like it's done. We can, we can move on to other b bigger, better things. And the other one is the resurrection trope. If you have the balls to kill a character, kill a character. Don't bring them back because that means there's no stakes to the story. That means that the absolute worst thing that can happen in a story happened and then it just didn't matter at all. So there is no, there are no high stakes. Now I know that people can be brought back. So obviously it just may, I think it diminishes the like strength of a story when you have a resurrection trope. And I think a lot of times it's used as cop outs for authors. And I think most of my least favorite books have the resurrection trope. So those are the two book tropes that I dislike the most without any disclaimers. All right, prompt number two. Which writers do you feel is overrated or overhyped? This is so easy for me. You have no idea how much I think Brandon Sanderson is overhyped. Now, before you get onto the hate train and call me a hater, I did read the Mistborn, not the trilogy. I read Mistborn or whatever, whatever it's called. The, I don't remember the, the, the final empire. It was okay. It was fine. The beginning was great. I was really into it. Then it just lagged and dragged on. And I just think Brandon Sanderson is this person that it's like, you have to read everything by him. His books are so amazing. They're the best books out there. Oh my God, are you reading Brandon Sanderson? And it's like booktube makes it seem like Brandon Sanderson is the be all end all of everything. Like if you're not reading Brandon Sanderson, it's like you're not reading Shakespeare. And to me, that's just not true. I mean, I enjoy Skyward and Starsight and I am gonna read Cytonic, but other than that, I'm not even going to continue with the Mistborn series. I just think Brandon Sanderson is really overhyped. And I, I think, I think when, when we, when an author gets really popular on booktube, we like retroactively feed into this. Like this person reads it and loves it. This person reads it and loves it. And it be, sort of becomes this thing where if you don't like it, you don't even want to say you don't like it. Like me saying that I don't really like Brandon Sanderson is kind of controversial and it can be seen like, oh my God, you know, like, like I could lose subscribers over it, which whatever, you know, if you, if you really care that much that I don't like Brandon Sanderson, that's okay. But I, I don't know. I just think that it gets to a point where it becomes ridiculous, where if you don't like in this case, Brandon Sanderson, then it's like, you don't know good literature or something. That's stupid. I, I just think it's stupid. I, I actually think I, I am not a believer of reading for the author, 
rather than reading for the story and I think I've talked about this before I'm a person that reads books not based on who wrote them but based on what the book brings to the table like for example I don't know one of my favorite authors is Becky Chambers but if she writes a high fantasy 800 page novel I'm not gonna buy that book just because it was Becky Chambers whereas with Brandon Sanderson I think Brandon Sanderson readers and the people that are hyping him to the moon and back will read anything he writes whether it's good or bad you know and then the bad ones you know that look like steel heart which was not considered very good just never gets talked about it's like no that didn't exist you know it's like he's on a pedestal and and i think that that's one of the reasons why i don't like him because i i tend to not gravitate toward things that are very popular and i think just brandon sanderson is super popular so that that was a long-winded answer Brandon Sanders is overhyped. Get over it. I mean, it's not, he's not that great. He's great, but he's, you know, I mean, no disclaimers. Brandon Sanders is overhyped. <laughs> Top number three. What are your least favorite books you've read since joining book two? Oh my God, there are so many. Okay, I'm going to think off the top of my head. I'm going to go with The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I think my expectations going into it were really high and it's not that it's a bad book it's just that I just didn't jive with it the other one that I finished that I read and finished is Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky that was really shitty and I didn't really like that one I mean it was really boring I was like okay so like get the spider and the spider is intelligent and it was <laughs> I just didn't like it and there's another one oh Blindness by Jose Saramago. Nobel Prize winning book. Fucking hated it. Just really hated it. You'll get a rant about it. I think you'll ha you'll have seen that rant before this video, but yeah, those are my least favorite books since I started booktube that I can think of off the top of my head with no disclaimers. Prompt number four. What is a terrible ending that ruined an otherwise quality book? I can tell you an ending that ruined an otherwise quality series, and that is the ending to the Raven Cycle series and specifically the Raven King. That ending, I cannot spoil it. Like I, I, I'm not trying to disclaimer it, but I cannot say it without spoiling the series for you. But let's just say that you cannot tell me something's gonna happen in book one, two, and three, and then in book four, cop out of it because you're copying out of something that is really controversial and really, you know, that would, I cannot say it because I'm gonna ruin it for you. <laughs> All right, look, I'm just gonna give you a spoiler warning. Um, it's up here. When this leaves, like, as long as this is here, don't listen. Basically, Gingsi is supposed to die since the beginning of the series. And then we get to the final book and he's resurrected. Why? Because fuck all, right? I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I really didn't like it. I didn't appreciate it. I thought it was a cop out because the character was so popular and I think because I because there there was no other reason it was because the character was popular okay so spoilers over it completely ruins the series I I I got rid of my books it's because I hated that ending so fucking much all right number five which fictional characters do you wish was not killed off um as I said before I actually have no problem with fictional characters being killed off in any medium i actually think that i mean if it's gratuitous gra 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 i can never say that word gratuitous if it's gratuitous is that how you say it? i don't know well you know if it's if it's just killed off like for example game of thrones like i feel characters keep getting killed off or kept getting killed off off of the show i don't know about the books because i haven't read the books like look at me do you know me i wouldn't read those books not because of anything it's just the high fantasy and they're over like a thousand pages long so that's just not my jam but i just feel like when it's just to cause shock then it doesn't i don't like it it's it's annoying it's like why why are you just trying to shock me by killing a character off for no good reason i actually enjoy when characters get killed off and stay dead because i think that that's really realistic and i just can't think of a character that I wish would have stayed alive. I, I, I mean, of course, that there are characters that I like and and that I and that I was sad when they got killed off. But that doesn't mean that I would like the story better if they hadn't been killed off. You know what I mean? 
So I don't think I have an answer for this one. I think that all of the characters that have been killed off in books that I have liked, or even in books that I haven't liked, I just, I think that as long as their deaths wasn't just too like, ooh, look at how shocking. And you know what? I know, I'm gonna change my answer. I mean, it, what's that character? I mean, it, I don't even care that much, but okay, I got it. So yeah, I think Finnick O'Dare's death was ridiculous. I think it falls into that category of um, characters that were killed off just because you needed to kill off a character. I think Finnick O'Dare, like, I think his death was ridiculous. I don't really like the Hunger Games that much, but I think his character death. I would have preferred you killed Katniss, to be fair, but <laughs> you know, that's just me. Number six, what are some of your bookish pet peeves? Um, isn't this like the same thing as my book tropes that I don't like? I guess the biggest one is Resurrections. That is my biggest bookish pet peeve. Um, I don't think I have any other bookish pet peeves. Well, I do have, I guess my bookish pet peeve would be people that think that because they read literary fiction or classics that makes them better than people that don't. I think that that's a bookish pet peeve of mine. I think that also I, I, I have another bookish pet peeve which is that, um, I, but I guess that's a booktube pet peeve which is that YA rules overall and like reading other things are, are is boring or something but yeah, that that I guess that's my bookish pet peeve. You know, you know what my motto is: like what you like, love what you love, fuck all else. You know. But other than that, I just I don't care. I just don't resurrect people. I really I really don't like it when you resurrect people. Um, oh, okay. Here's another one. Here's another one. Adults facilitating bad behavior in children and it being seen as a good thing in books. And I'm you know I'm talking about Heartstopper and also and parents I think that that is such a like cliche and why like where are the parents you know like why are parents allowing this to happen and why are kids doing things that adults should be doing unless there's like a, an explanation for it like for example in the Percy Jackson world I understand why and and even then parents are or not parents, well, okay, parents, but you know, adults are present in the story helping the, the teenagers, but I read so many books where it's like, wait, how are you 17? You are not acting like a 17 year old. Yeah, that's another pet peeve. When when you have a YA book where basically the, the kid is acting like an adult, but they're younger just because the publisher wanted it to be YA. I really hate that. I, 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 I just, I don't like reading about teenagers and especially when they don't even act like teenagers. But if they act like teenagers, then I also don't like it. I just don't like reading book about teenagers in general. Oh, and here's another, another one. The not like other girls thing. Oh my God, when the, when the girl is so different from the other girls, because you know, the only other girls in the world are just all the same, <laughs> you know? Or when there's only one girl in a group of, oh man, oh, so I guess I have a bunch of bookish pet peeves. I didn't know that until just I just started ranting about it. But yeah, those, those things can just go all in the garbage bag and just, you know, never, never come out again because why, why, why? Why is there only one girl in, 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 in groups, um, Miss Bourne? Number seven, what are some books you feel should have more recognition? All this shelf right here, except Dune. Dune has enough recognition. But, uh, the Monstromologist, the Wanda series, Magic for Liars, The Magicians, Night Film. I guess Station Eleven does have pretty good recognition. But basically all of this shelf right here, which is like my favorite shelf. Also, Do You Dream of Terra 2 by Tammy O, oh, I think should have way more recognition. I think, I think I've been blown out white this whole video. I'm so sorry. Like I said, I, I forgot how to do lighting and everything. Is that that? I'm sorry. I think I was like blown out that entire video. I'm so sorry. But anyway, yeah. Do you dream of Terrio? Do you dream of Terra 2 by Tammy O? Born by Jeff Vandermeer, Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. Yeah. That those books, I think those books should have more recognition. Anything that's not YA basically. I think 
anything that is not YA should have more recognition on YouTube because I just think that we are so bombarded with YA that there is just no space for recognition for anything else unless you're fucking Brandon Sanderson you know like ugh. and number eight what are your thoughts on censorship and banning books oh dear um I don't think censoring books is a good idea however I do think that there should be trigger warnings for certain books and I think there should be yeah trigger warnings I guess it should be trigger warnings because I was gonna say like there should be like a this book is recommended for so-and-so ages but there already is that however I don't think it really works that well because for example I don't think Heartstopper is a book that should be written but that should be read by younger kids because of certain scenes and I just don't think that certain ages would know what to do with that but i don't but i don't think that there is a way to control that because come on i was reading flowers in the attic when i was like 16 like you know people are gonna get two books so i just think actually banning and censoring books is a really a really bad idea i don't like it i just i can't think of a of a of a of a book that i would be like this book should be banned because in the end when you ban something you just throw it underground and it's just like the same thing as it as drugs or alcohol if you ban it people are gonna want it more so i just think that there should just definitely be trigger warnings in front of books so not only do adults know what we're getting into when we read a book but also parents that are looking to buy books for their children know what they're buying for their children like if i, I just not that I don't know not that children can't read certain books it's just that there are things that for a reason during your development you are not going to be able to understand and I think that parents should be aware of that when they're buying books for their children I just think trigger warning should be a thing in front of books and that's it that's the tag i was so nervous to film this oh my gosh so yeah without further ado um let me know what you thought about my thoughts and remember not to disclaimer it with anything and i am tagging anybody who wants to do this if you haven't done it i it, consider yourself tagged i've been out of the game for a while so i don't know who's done what what's done who you know what's done who girl but anyway um i hope you enjoyed it and remember these are all my opinions you can disagree with me and also if you've made it this far in the video please leave a black heart down below to let me know that you're here even though you have nothing else to say to me because sometimes i just want to know that i'm not talking to the void and without further ado i bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that i post three times a week usually and that i will see you all in another galaxy far far away Bye!